way, if we can't get it to restart, then we'll just create our own tutorial. Alright, welcome. This is MDog from MDog Gaming. Please come join me at Twitch. Uh, for With MDog Gaming is what you're looking for. Uh, we often are streaming this Russian Fishing 4. Would love for you to join me. Um, okay, now we're getting the prompt to do the tutorial. This is what I was hoping before. This video is really intended um, to be for someone who is brand new approaching this game. I'm going to walk you through... Uh, sort of what I think is a good way to get started in Russian Russian Fishing 4. It can be a little bit overwhelming at first because there is a lot going on. It can also um, it can also be a little discouraging because it feels like it's going to be this huge grind. Uh, and that's just I don't know why, but it feels that way the first time you play. But then if you if you if it gets its hooks into you and you come back the second time, that quickly sort of dissipates. At least it did for me. Um, but let's just kind of talk through stuff. First, let's go through the tutorial. So normal movements, WASD, uh, it is helpful to realize that F is your flashlight. You want us to stand on the bridge. It says this is a perfect stop for, stop, uh, spot for fishing. Let's choose a rod and set up the floating rig with a fixed line. So we're going to be using a fixed line. In other words, we're not going to be using a spinner, right? We're not going to be bottom fishing. It's going to be a fixed, fixed line. So we're going to press I to open up our backpack. He want, they want us to choose. So they start you off with this basic uh, rod. And um, it says to go ahead and hit the pick up button. It looks like it's not set up yet. Okay, so it does want us to go ahead and... Okay, so this is what you do. When, anytime you're putting your rod together, um, your fishing rod together, you, 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 obviously you need fishing line. And we just have one choice on each six uh, section here. Um, we need to float, so we'll use Bob Original Floater. We need a hook, we'll use one of our classic hooks here. And we need some bait. And so we can go um, worm or bread. We'll choose worm for this uh, tutorial purposes. So now we have this, we wanna go ahead and hit, hit pick up. Now this is a, um, okay, now it's having a set. Plus and minus key actually sets um, the depth of where the worm's going to be, so how far up the the float's going to move, and it wants us to put it at one cent, um, one meter. So we're pressing up to one meter there, and now it's telling us how to cast. I do want to show you something real quick. I think this is a good time to say this. If you hit F1, you get a lot of the basic uh, controls. What does what? And I am using mouse and keyboard. Um, I'm not even sure if you can do controller support. I haven't tried it. I actually really like the game with mouse and keyboard, but this shows you a lot of what you can do. And what I wanted to highlight is if you hit U, you can assign out of your backpack, assign your fishing rods or other tools, things that you'll eventually have to your one, two, and three. So shortcut. So if we push this fishing pole back in our backpack, we could hit one and we'll pull it right back out. Okay. So do we have our flashlight on? We do, it's just not providing a lot of light. Um, and we're gonna cast this, hopefully, into the area that they want us to, we did. And now, this is really important, hit Z to zoom in. And now we're just waiting on a fish, but that zooming in is really important, and when you become a more advanced fisher person, you will have the option of fishing at much greater distances, obviously with faster or, or, or actually casting rods or um, with the what is it called Balinese or whatever it's called the type of fishing where you let a current take your and so there's times where you'll even need to use binoculars to see okay now we've got a fish on there all right we did not uh, apparently we did not let it um, I let it sit so um, We'll feel the load on the on the rod if we if it if it gets uh, set successfully. The the thing says, but um, and this is a, an opportunity as we're waiting for this to happen again, to talk about the stages of the fish getting on your line. And this is a, especially obviously applies to when you're float fishing or using a bobber. Um, there, it's really described as being in two stages. And the, the more you sort of 
think about this and then learn what these stages look like with different species of fish. And mostly the differences is going to be the speed of which it transitions from stage one to stage two. You really don't want to set the hook until stage two. Stage one, you might see some movement in the um, in the float. It might be you know nibbling. The fish might be sampling, seeing if it's something that it's interested in. We're going to try a slightly different location here. Just that's a long time to not get a bite in this little tutorial area. Um, so you might see the, the float just kind of bobbing up and down a little bit. You might even see it move left to right slightly. Uh, and, and sometimes, especially like the carp, as we'll see it, it's doing it now, we'll, the carp will do this for quite a while. But once they start moving it around, at that point, it's, to me, sort of transitioning to stage two. Or if it gets pulled all the way into the water, like they are consuming that whole piece of bread or that whole worm, or they're trying to take it back to its comfortable spot where it wants to eat it, at that point, you've definitely gone to stage two, and you're going to try to set the hook by pressing and holding the left mouse button and uh, trying to get that fish on the line. And we are, once we finish this tutorial, I am gonna take you to the first like major fishing area, show you all of the buildings that are there and kind of talk about, we can't cover everything. One of the things I really like about this game is there is a lot of complexity. Um, all right, so it's gone off to the side. We're gonna try to set this, yeah, and you can see the resistance. We've got that carp on the line. So we got the Crucian carp, it tells you the size, 229 grams. It encourages us to hit the keep button. You see the points we got, 24 points. We're float fishing. All right, we got 0.2 XP towards float fishing. And we'll look at skills more in a little bit, but it's really broken down by the three major parts, types of fishing you can do in the game. And then there's subcategories within that. All right, so now it wants us to go to Mosquito Lake. But before we leave this area, let's put this fishing pole in our backpack by hitting backspace. Before we leave, I did want to show you one other thing. You've got this nice gazebo, but the main thing is there's this cabin here. If you approach the house, and you hit E, you will get spare tackle. So right now, if you look in our backpack, we only have this one rod. Once a day, oh, let's look how much bait we have too, because I'm, I'm not sure on how much we're gonna get here. We've got 28 worms and 30 pieces of bread. All right, once a day, you can get spare tackle here. And we succeeded. So now we have, so if, if early in the game, uh, I'm gonna encourage you to do uh, bobber float fishing like we've been doing here in the tutorial to start off the game to earn a little bit of income to get going but if you want to jump right into spin spinner fishing you've got enough silver that you could really do that if you want to do feeder fishing which is the other category I think arguably to do feeder fishing you do need to earn some income first because of the different parts of that fishing pole that you're gonna to have to put together um, but this basic uh, Soviet Union bamboo rod. So now we have two rods and that's that's really what I wanted to show you. I think it's worth doing this because of what I'm going to show you once we get to the uh, regular the first like larger fishing area. We're going to do a two rod approach to add a little excitement to the game, the early game. Um, we got some extra line. So we not only have the line that's already equipped on our telestick that we've already assembled, we also have extra line, we have an extra float a little feather float that works just fine. We already had one extra hook, now we've got a rusty hook. We've got some weights, and this is what I look at. So now we're up to 58 worms, still 30 pieces of bread. So we're getting, what, 30 worms once a day, so that's kind of nice. And uh, you start off with a map of this cottage pond. So if you hit M, you can see a map of, and I like this because it shows you the depth of the water, right? And I've never been down here. Apparently there's another little body of water down here. Um, and you can stay and fish here, or you can come back and fish here. In fact, I will sometimes do that if the weather's really bad at the next area, um, just because I'm still fairly low level on my main account. I think I'm eight, almost nine now. All right, this is what they're wanting us to do, though. They're wanting us to go to Mosquito Lake. So you click on the Cottage Pond here in the Options menu that I got here by hitting Escape, and then you click on Mosquito Lake and Travel. Now, you'll notice if once you get to high enough level for these other places, It'll have this travel button. It'll also cost a certain amount of silver. But to travel between Cottage Pond and Mosquito Lake, no charge to travel those two places, which is really nice because it gives you that option of going back and forth, getting your free tackle. I mean, basically, you can always reset. What I was saying before, and I don't think I finished my thought, and sorry, I, I ramble in these videos, but if you can be patient with me, hopefully this information will be helpful. But 
if you start off and you want to go right to spinning fishing, this game can be fairly realistic and like harsh at times. So let's say you go and you spend all your 50 silver you spend on a, a rod and a, a, a reel. You get some uh, some braided uh, line to, that'll be strong enough to, and you get a lure that you really like. And, and you so you've kind of invested everything at the beginning into the spinning setup. And you go down, you spin your first cast, a fish gets on there, maybe it's a little bigger fish and it pulls it right into the weeds and you lose everything, right? Somehow you lose everything. Well, that's where you can always go back to that starter cabin once a day and get um, and get your free setup, just the basic Russian bamboo pole, the rusty hook. And, and honestly, that stuff will get you, um, once you get going and build some skills, you can catch plenty of the early fish, even the valued fish in this mosquito lake area all right so let's check everything out i don't know if there's an order that we necessarily should do this we're going to start like farthest away from the water once a day you can come here to the field kitchen and press e to eat so once every in-game day you can get free foods you really don't ever have to worry about eating unless you're doing a lot of activities that are are really put a lot of um, exhaustion onto you. Like if you're digging for worms a lot or fishing with heavier gear, you may have to eat more often. And you may also want to eat for some of the bonuses, but let's don't get ahead of ourselves. All right, so that's that. The other thing is we'll do real quick is just look at the workshop. We're not going to get in deep on any of this stuff, but the workshop is where you can repair your current equipment. And if you use the in-game currency silver, then it'll take a certain amount of hours to repair equipment or you can go to the store and you can buy things like one of the early things you may want to purchase I would say not at level one but maybe around level 10 according to how much uh, income you're bringing in it doesn't normally take that long to load maybe it's the first time I've been to the thing is why it takes but you might want to get a shovel that way you can dig up your own worms it, it will pay for itself if you end up needing to buy worms. Just depends on how much you're fishing and how much you're using worms. But um, it's kind of a cool thing. And I haven't done that yet on my main account, but I'm almost at the point where I'm going to. But there's a lot of stuff. And, and you know, again, we're going to try to keep this video without being forever long. So we're not going to get into every part of it. Maybe we'll break down some of these components into much more detail in a future video. This is the tackle store. So this is literally where you're going to go to purchase um, to purchase everything you know what let's not do this first of all let's finish the tutorial it's gonna walk us through many different things so right now he wants us to go to the fish market and sell your catch this is the primary way that you're gonna earn money in this game you're gonna catch fish you're gonna come to the fish market the only caveat to that is we need to talk about the cafe but first let's do this you're gonna come to the fish market you're going to see the fish that you've caught. Right now we have a 229 gram carp. Pretty small carp. It's only worth six pennies. Now, if you see that, well, 6.06 .06 silver. Let's just use the currency that's a part of the game and not, um, not put my own currency on top of it. But that looks like a small amount, and it is. It basically is signifying that you're not really going to get anything for it. But if you sell all of your really small fish, it might pay for a hook in the day, in a day or something like that that you lose. So it may still be worth selling it. But you're going to, as you fish and as you get some skills and just luck, if you spend some time fishing, you're going to get these fish that will have this ribbon on there that indicates that it's a higher value fish. And those are going to sell for significantly more um, based on the weight uh, and what kind of fish it is, you know, you're going to get... You know, even early in the game, you'll get over a silver for some fish. And that adds up, you know, pretty quick. But right now, they're wanting us to sell this. So we sold it. And now, close the fish market. We have one more task for you. Find the tackle store and buy worms. So they are, again, just showing us how to do the basics. So we were about to come to the tackle store, so I'm glad that... That's why I wanted to go ahead and finish the um, tutorial because I figured it might have us do this. Go to the directory Bates and click on the name Worm. So we'll go to Bates here, click on Worm, and purchase it by clicking this. We have 50.06 silver. 
One set of 30 worms cost 1.8 silver. So we'll purchase that. And it'll help you the bank. Now close the store window. So we have done all that they've asked us to do. It's setting us free. Go be a fisher, man or woman. The last thing it tells you is about this quick reference guide to show you all the ways that you can control things. All right. Now, we're going to go back in the tackle store. I wanted to give you an example. So let's look at rods. Let's say you wanted to, to do feeder fishing, which is what, on my main account, I'm about to try feeder fishing for the first time. So the most inexpensive feeder rod we could get for $37.80. I'm actually going to probably end up purchasing the one that costs $41.80. It's just, there's some slight variety in terms of uh, length and that kind of thing. But uh, so for about 40 silver, and then you could get a basic spinning reel for 950. So that's about 50 total silver. You will need a line and you'll want to go nylon because it needs to, on a feeder fishing pole, feeder setup, it needs to be invisible, right? So that's about four silver. I think we'll probably go with about the seven pound. That's about four silver. We wouldn't need a lure. We won't need a float because it's feeder, it's bottom fishing. We'll need a basic hook and we'll go with um, uh, maybe an eight, an eight or a 10, somewhere around in there for our feeder fish to, to give us the opportunity to catch a little bit bigger fish, but not so much that it's gonna break our equipment. We'll then need a sinker, probably a number four, 30 gram sinker. And some of this is because of how it um, just the, the, what the, the rig is going to be able to handle is kind of how you choose what you're going to want on it. Uh, bait, we can use worms to start off with. Maggots work well. You want to be careful with corn might get a bigger fish than you can handle early, but you can certainly use like, there's lots of different options of what you could use, but um, it just depends on what you're fishing for and you kind of experiment with different baits. We'll need a leader, so that's another silver 20. So anyway, you get up to about, we can't use actual feeders early on. You have to level up your feeding, fishing before you can do that. But um, you may want to purchase some ground bait. If you're not familiar with feeder fishing, usually ground bait is a part of that. The other thing I wanted to show you in here is, is, the, uh, is the net. You, with people that play this game, you often hear them say, sometime fairly early in the game, go ahead and buy a net because this just makes some fish based on the size and where you're fishing are really hard to bring in if you don't have a landing net. So that's another 2750. So you can see it starts to add up just to become a just to have like the very cheapest basic feeder fishing set set up it's going to run you about 60 silver. You can do a little less than that if you're just wanting to do like um, spinning fishing and obviously float fishing is much less. All right. What have we not looked at? Let's look at the cafe real quick. These are orders so I don't necessarily worry about these before I start fishing, but after I'm f done fishing, I always check the orders. The one that I find you can most commonly fill early in your, in your career will be the common roach order. You need five roach, common roaches, that weigh somewhere between 50 grams and 174 grams. So that's on the smaller side, you'll catch those. Um, it's got a time limit and it'll reset I think every day I've done this order this particular order a couple different days at this point the next one you might get is the perch not the large one but the small perch order those are the two most likely early ones you'll get um, but these what you'll find is the amount you get for these orders is a lot more than what you'll get for just selling the fish that make up that order. So you always wanna check the cafe first, it's much more lucrative. Um, this is an ATM, if you're wanting to get the gold currency, so the one that it actually cost real life money, that's how you would do that. It, it actually just directs you to their website. Administration building, as far as I know, the only thing this sells at different locations is gonna be the map. So if we wanted to have the map of this area, which on my main account, of course I did do that, you would purchase it there. Since we don't have the map, if we hit M right now, we actually can't see the map. So it's kind of cool, you actually have to. Grocery store, we're not gonna talk about crafting and all that very much in this video, but like if you buy a loaf of bread, you can you know, make bread to use as bait off of that. Um, or you can just get food for your own um, survival 
and also a lot of the food and drinks have hidden so like let's look at a uh, monkey cola 0.03 if you hover over this it says it has hidden bonuses and so once you drink it i think you discover what the bonus is here let's test that it only costs 45 silver 0.45 silver all right so we've purchased it it's in our inventory let's go down to drinks let's see if we drink this consume monkey cola i've never done this before so i don't know all right let's see now if we look at monkey cola if it tells us what's the no nope, it still says has hidden bonuses so i I'm, i don't know how you discover what the bonuses are to be to be frank but let's go fishing this is the boat station if you want to rent the boat for a day not something that i would necessarily think you'd want to do early on you actually want to hold on to that money um, and so if you had the map you kind of look at the map but there's the lake um, I, i'm just going to go to a spot that uh, has worked well for me and kind of show you how i got started and was able to earn a good bit of early silver to then feel like I had the option to go do things like become um, start experimenting with feeder fishing and that kind of stuff which is what I'm about to do on my main account uh, so monkey cola apparently gives you energy one of the people from my chat is telling me uh, greetings Waynak welcome to the channel I'm actually just putting together a quick like intro guide for someone who's completely new to the game just some of the very basics all right, so you saw me put the first pole together. Let's go ahead and put the second pole together. We need to put fishing line, and we're just using the free stuff that you can get once a day. The feather float, and we'll even use it. We won't use our extra classic hook. We'll use the rusty hook, and we'll put some bread on there as the bait. And we'll go ahead and pick this pole up. And we're going to go and assign this one to our number two spot. So remember I was telling you about if you hold U down, you can assign to um, different numbers. So you can quickly change between your different poles. And um, we still have this one set at one meter. We're going to just cast this out here. Now, if you press zero, you put your pole down on some uh, on a, on a uh, fishing pole stand. And then we're going to throw our second pole out here. Now, this is what was exciting for me early in the game. Um, it adds just a, a little bit more stress and tension to have two, <laughs> two, two uh, floats out there at the same time. And you'll see our, um, our bamboo stick is already catching something here. And I'm zoomed in, but I'm not actually holding either pole. What I'm going to do is just wait to see a fish get on one. It actually came on our big pole first. Go ahead and hold left mouse button, see if we can set the hook. And we did. And we caught our first common roach. So we'll keep that. And we'll throw this back in here because we're also watching that uh, other fishing pole. It's been biting it like crazy. It still hasn't taken it though. I'd still say this is, um, is still in the phase one of the bite and hasn't really attached to the point that you want to set the hook. So uh, Wayne Ack is saying the best way to see what food or drink is doing for you is to consume it and then while after, as you consume it, go ahead and look at your four statistics, which are at the bottom left-hand side of the screen. And I don't think I've talked about those. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead and pull this guy in. So he did get off and immediately just throw it back out there. The nice thing is you're very quick at reapplying that bait, whether it's the bread or the worms that we're using on the other pole. So you see in the bottom left-hand side, you've got your current level. Almost, also the experience you need to level up. So we're level one, we're gonna get experience every time we catch a fish towards leveling up. And then you see these four symbols and the bars as we try to set another fish over here and it broke away. Until you have some built up experience and skills, I, I think you will see more fish get away. On my main account, which I'm only at like maybe level eight, but I've put a few points into uh, float fishing and I'm not seeing as many I'm, I'm probably a little bit higher percentage of, of landing them successfully uh, things like some tackle will tell you what the bonus is so not all the bonuses are hidden and it looks like we may get another one here and we might want to reposition our uh, our bamboo pole it hasn't caught something in a while one thing I like about this game is it does give you the uh 
the notifications when you catch the biggest fish you've caught so far. And by the way, we need to put this down and see if this fish is still on here. That, uh, yeah, it was underwater. Didn't take the bait though. Um, so let's take a talk about those four things on the bottom left hand side. We have energy, which is the lightning bolt. We have your hunger level, which is the fork and knife. We have your current luck, which um, your luck increases the chances of you getting bites from fish, especially in maybe, you know, storms or times when the fish are less likely to bite. It also increases your chance of landing a trophy fish or a more rare fish. And then finally, you have the fourth one that kind of looks like a sun, but it's your basically your overall comfort level, which is impacted by your uh, energy level, your food level, the setting you're in. If, it, if you are out in a storm or if you're in the middle of the night and you're not near a campfire, you're just kind of out in the mosquitoes, your comfort level is going to be lower. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and Waniac is talking about level one. He remembers, he or she remembers those days and that grind to level nine. And that's one of the things that I wanted to say. And, and this for me, using the two fishing poles as a setup added some excitement to the early game, which I'm technically still in. I'm just about to hit level nine on my main account. Um, but this at least kind of made it a little more exciting and uh, to get some of those or orders fulfilled and to start to see the bigger fish slowly start to come in. And also just to say that you can catch really good fish even on this bamboo rod um, early on. And so we've already got, if you hit, if you hit C while you're playing, you pull up your keep net and here's that uh, yellow check mark. This is showing that this common roach is in a higher category in terms of what you'll get paid for it. So we can go look at the differences at the uh, fish market to show you, you basically don't get anything for the fish that are smaller than that, but the fish that meet the criteria for that, you get much more. It is a he, okay. So we set another record there with a common roach and we're actually, look at that fish carrying our other float down the uh, river here. He's probably not on it, but our bait probably isn't on it either. Oh, he is. So this is a pretty big fish to try to catch with the bamboo. That is the only, oh, try not to break this. That is the only, okay, okay. Yeah, line is torn off. Okay, he took it. That's the only downside is if you do, quote unquote, accidentally catch one of those uh, larger fish than you're ready for on the bamboo pole. We'll go ahead and put that up in our backpack. Um, it can mess your, your rig up. So, but again, all of that was free just by going to that, um, that cabin and the in game time passes fast enough that it would not be very long that we could go get a whole nother free setup or all we're missing is a basic float. Um, we could just go purchase that out of the store to get our second our uh, second line going again. But this is really what I did early on was just kind of grinding it out and uh, leveling up those first few levels. So let's, um, let's real quickly look at what you can do with skill points. And um, we'll go sell those fish so I can show you the difference. And then we'll wrap this long intro video up but I just wanted to kind of show you the basics. Um, we haven't looked at any of this. I told you we're not gonna get into crafting in this video, but this is where you would do it. Uh, you unlock skills to get more recipes, but there's lots of things you can craft in terms of baits. Also ground bait, if you're wanting to do the uh, bottom fishing. And then you, what, what I think is so amazing, and I'm nowhere near being able to do this, but I think it's so cool that you can craft your own lures. I just think that's really cool. And the more skill points you have and the more experience you have, the better lures you'll craft. So I'm kind of excited about some of those uh, some of those components. And uh, Waniac did want to mention that uh, alcohol adds to your energy and it also can give you luck. Tea, coffee, and spice, wine all add to your comfort and uh, you have to make them at the campfire. Okay, so um, we've looked at our internet, I mean our internet, our inventory, our keep net. Skills is what I was wanting to show you. And I told you that it kind of divides it into the three types of fishing you can do in this game. And here you see them. 
because we've caught a couple fish, you see we've already started to get progress towards our float fishing. We haven't done any speed spin fishing and we haven't done any um, bottom fishing. <laughs> nice, Pucifer. Grats on finally winning. Uh, Pucifer was uh, trying to get me a free pack in Hearthstone because I had the daily quest of, of winning, but I wasn't logged in over there, so I, I didn't get the notification to go watch him do that. Um, and so if you go to either of these three categories, basically what you're able to do is start putting points into things that are gonna, is gonna make you a better fisher person in that system. So for float fishing, we can put points in giving us uh, fishing with a telescopic rod, which gives us better accuracy and control of fish. You can level that all the way down. The second one is using a rig with a fixed line, which is what we're currently doing. And we can get technique in improving. If we wanna use a hair rig, uh, once we get our total float fishing up to 25%, we could then start putting points into this. And it just keeps going. Spinning reel, uh, and then it just, you know, there's lots of different things. And so it basically, it's not only making you more skilled, it's actually unlocking your ability to use different types of equipment in different situations. Spin fishing, and from the beginning, you can just start spin fishing, right? The more traditional casting and reeling in using lures very affordable you can get a very basic pole put together to do that um, and so using sp same kind of thing putting skills in this is the same kind of thing fishing with spoons and spinner baits is what we can do from the start jigging we can start doing that once we get again to 25 percent that opens up wobbler topwater lure three-way rig casting rod just keeps going and going the more experience you get by fishing in that category the more things you can open up on my main account tonight what i'm about to start trying if i don't um, get called out for work first i'm about to start bottom fishing to see if i enjoy bottom fishing which i've never done in this game yet so um, if i want to start putting points in that i would go to this category the other category we talked briefly about harvesting worms and other baits if you want to really do a lot of that this is the where you'd put your skills making ground bait for the bottom fishing or just for attracting attracting fish to a certain spot um, you would go here and then finally making lures which i've kind of got my eye on at some point wanting to put maybe a couple points into maybe pick one type and really trying to get really proficient in making that type i'm kind of partial uh, partial to spoons so maybe choosing one of the spoons but we'll see um, and those are all the of the skills. They also have a really cool, by the way, you can reset for free one time. So if you don't like where your points end up, I because here I am at about to be level nine. I'm already thinking about resetting. I, I think, go ahead and put your points in. But for me, I kind of want to try all the different types of fishing before I decide where I want to specialize. So I do think it's worth being a little bit careful on how you put those points around early in the game. I love the statistics they keep up with, like so many different statistics. Um, and then achievements that you've earned based on their achievement systems. So, uh, Waniac makes another great point. The game is still only about 40% complete, so there's a lot more to come. Um, in fact, right now, they're about to come out with a whole new location and some new species of fish. Uh, so you can see right now we go all the way up to uh, Volkov River, and they're coming out with a new river uh, very soon. So developers definitely still working on this game, actively um, involved in the forums and um, and all that. So really good stuff. I think that's about it for the intro video. There's one other thing I want to do is just kind of go back and show you... Um, show you the difference in terms of what you get for a fish if it's above that weight threshold that makes it a valued fish versus what is basically a throwaway fish so if you go to the fish market we've got two roaches that meet the category but you see by the yellow check mark so for these two and if you hold control you can select multiple fish for these two we're getting a total of six silver and then just for one of these we're getting 1.44 silver so for both of them combined 3.28 but before we sell them let me show you something else this is what I said, you know, earlier in the video, I said, anytime you go fishing for a while, always come check the cafe. Cause I think if we go look at our common roach category, oh no, none of them actually meet the criteria. You know, the two we, we sold just now might have met the criteria. Cause remember the criteria is a pretty low weight criteria for these 50 to 174. If you look in our keep net, 
we kept the two big ones. So um, we really, sh I should have showed you that before we sold the, the cheap ones. But so we'll go ahead and sell all. And we're back up to over 50 silver. And we just sell, set a personal record for the most expensive fish sold. So that is, this is Russian fishing for, it has hit the sweet spot. Again, I have played several different fishing games at this point. And there's, um, I mean, I'm going to be transparent. There's one that I'm still actively playing that's in early access on Steam that's not free to play. It's a one-time purchase and you have everything. It's called Ultimate Fishing Simulator. And it is awesome. The graphics are beautiful. The fishing feels so good. It does not have near the complexity. And therefore, um, it just there's something about Russian fishing for and the progression and all of the complexity of the game that really captures my imagination. So, um, where, where ultimate fishing simulator, which is still in early access. So hopefully it's got a lot more to come as well. You can kind of play through all of its content in a weekend, uh, with Russian fishing for this is one that's, it almost feels more like an MMO, right? Where you're going to really dig in the levels come fairly slowly. Uh, there's a lot of different branching paths you can go, and um, so it is, for me, the, the one sort of fishing game that I've played that has really captured my imagination. And although there might be components of other games that I like as much or even better, as a total package, this is my jam right now. Russian Fishing for. I hope this has been helpful. Please leave me comments uh, on YouTube if you've got questions or uh, if there's things that you feel like I could have explained better and I can certainly try to do some follow-up. I hope to do more videos getting more in depth in the different types of fishing and I'm learning so much more just by going to forums and um, there's a user guide that they have put out that really is good. I'll try to link that in the in the description of this video but um, that's actually on the Russian Fishing 4 website. By the way, this is not on Steam. You actually do have to go to, I think it's rf 4 just Google Russian fishing for. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, this is M dog. And I really appreciate you appreciate you all watching for those of you in the chat. We are going to switch over to my main account and continue to play. Waniac it has been great to see you for the first time. Um, thanks for coming to the channel. I do hope you'll come back and, uh, I'm sure there's a lot you could teach me about Russian fishing for. It seems like you have been, uh, playing a lot longer than I have, but thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to end the video here. All right, I'm going to switch back over to my main account.